the Lord are more than a conqueror. On behalf of Jesus, who is the head of the church, and his servant, who is unavailably absent, I welcome you to this covenant day of breaking generational causes. The Lord shall visit you greatly in the name of Jesus. This month we have been running on this theme, Jesus Christ still heals and delivers today. Shall we echo it together? Hebrews 13 verse 8 said that Jesus, the same yesterday, today and forever, his healing power didn't expire at his death. It was still as effective as when he rose. What he did in the previous times, he still can do till tomorrow. Because when you have this understanding, the experience of the past makes you pregnant with expectation for the future. And on that, we have been looking at walking in dominion over sickness and diseases, part 3A. Walking in dominion over sickness and disease. And we have established it over and again that dominion is rulership. Having life the way you desire it with no fear of sickness or disease. And dominion is not an ambition, it is whom God has made you to be. Genesis chapter 1, beginning from verse 26, after the creation of man, God said, and let them have dominion. And let them have dominion over everything and consigns of destiny. But you know that there is no dominion without information. It takes awareness for you to be enthroned. That is why Daniel 11.32 says that the people that know their God, they shall be strong in the God they know and they shall not begin to do exploits. So the best way to change your life is to change your information. If you are not happy with the results you are getting, change the intake, change the inflow because information determines your dominion. That is why on this mountain, and all through the rest of this month, you shall be exercising this dominion in every area of life in the mighty name of Jesus. It's important for you to know that you cannot solve the problem of life in the same level for which it was created. You need to ascend with a higher information for you to be able to subdue it. That is why Psalm 63 verse 66 verse 3, he said, through the greatness of your power, shall the enemies, including sickness, submit themselves unto you. So, God was also speaking to us in Psalm 110, verse 1 to 2. He says, sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. How, will he, how does he intend to do it? By the information I'm giving you as you are seated, your enemies be Comes your footstool. Your enemy shall become your footstool. That is why sickness and disease, after this service, it shall be a thing of the past in your life in the name of Jesus. All through the course of this month, we have been hearing it again and again that the end time church has been enthroned to be in dominion over every sphere of life. That is dominion over sickness, dominion over disease. That is why James chapter 5 verse 14, is there, is there anyone sick among you? So by the conclusion of that, in Zion, there is no meant to be anyone that is sick among us. That is why it came as a question, is there anyone that is still sick among you? Therefore, if perhaps there is anyone in this sanctuary, the hand of God shall be visiting you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Understand that God never placed sickness upon you. James 1 17, every good and perfect gift come from the Father of light. Every good, every good. So God cannot be punishing you with sickness. Every good. There is no father that is wicked because the child disobeyed and they now took him to Boko Haram, afflict him for me. He might likely not find the bones of that child. So God cannot be so senseless to punish you with sickness. So this is why you need to develop a natural hatred over sickness and disease. The question is, as you keep servicing sickness and diseases, where will you have money to build your houses? As you keep paying hospital, to hospital bills, where will you have money to develop your businesses? This is why God wants you to walk in a healthy life. He wants you to walk in a bouncing life where sickness and disease cannot be a torture. And that is where you are coming in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Have you noticed that in every hospital, there is no negotiation for hospital bill? 
If they tell you it is one million, you can't say I have 900,000. It is one million you pay. It is quote and pay. So that is the same way. Everything that is meant to be a leakage of your finances through sickness and disease, the Lord shall be terminating them in the name of Jesus. So you need to be aware that God has placed you above what you are serving presently. The good news is that the master surgeon is in this house. And he came with his surgical knife. Therefore, everything that concerns health challenge, he shall be putting it in his knife in the name of Jesus. There is never any better mechanic than the manufacturer. No mechanic is better than the manufacturer. If God created your body, he can fix it when it breaks down. Anytime a Toyota goes down, you don't take it to a BMW shop. You take it to where it can be fixed and given the perfect hit. Therefore, because God is the creator of all things, it shall be fixing everything that has been wrong in your body in the name of Jesus. And it's true for you to know that God does not need a donor for a, fl a failed kidney. Anything that fails, he replaces it quickly. Because you have come to his theater this morning, there shall be a supernatural replacement in the name of Jesus. So you establish it that I have been given dominion over all things on earth. And for that, we have been looking at the various spirits responsible. Because we said that behind every sickness is the spirit and infirmity of the devil. And for that, we have been looking at one thing or the other. But today, one of those spirits that are responsible for sickness and disease is the spirit of sexual perversion. Say with me, sexual perversion. What is the role of this spirit? It is responsible for sexual deviant behaviors in the redeemed. And what is its intention? It wants to afflict your body through the channel of sexual immorality. In Hosea chapter 5 and verse 4, Bible said that they will frame their doings to turn unto their God. For the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them. And they have not known the Lord. The spirit of whoredom. This spirit makes people comfortable with immorality. Even when everything is at their disposal, it gives them no satisfaction to go all around to get their desire satisfied. You need to be aware in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. He said, flee fornication. Don't condone it. Don't allow it. Flee fornication. For every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, and you are of God, and you are not your own. He said, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord. One thing is certain, if you don't stop immorality, very shortly it will stop you. You need to come to this realization that what you are calling enjoyment is only an immature affliction. It's only brooding to happen on a very short note. I'd like you to understand that your life is in your hand. If you are playing dice with it, there is no replacement. Because it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, there is judgment. There is one throne that nobody or life on earth can never escape. And that is the throne of judgment. You need to understand that everything you are jubilating and jumping about now, you cannot eat your cake and eventually have it. But I pray that this morning, help is coming for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you don't burn a bridge, you eventually use it. Any bridge you don't burn that is not necessary, you eventually find yourself using the bridge. So this is why you and I need to be angry at this spirit and its activities in our life. Because it wants to pollute the glorious destiny God has apportioned for you. If you tell a man, for example, don't overspeed. He might think that you are angry. The water is doing. He's flying in 280. Very shortly, when the legs are broken in accident, the same car that he's using to fly in 280, they will put him at the back and the person will be quietly riding on 60 and he won't have any impute about it. What we are telling you is that there is something happening about tomorrow that you cannot do anything about. And how you can only control it is by what you are doing today. This is why you need to wake up and win this warfare against spiritual perversion. 
The days we are living in is so polluted that even an ordinary advert can suggest immorality to you. It has been so watered down that it has become a normal thing in life. As small as toothpaste, it needs to be advertised by a naked woman for it to sell. So that means that there is a war between us in our day. That until you rise up against it, you fall a cheap to the enemy. None of us shall be in it in the mighty name of Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication. Neither. Neither. As some of them committed and fell in one day. 23,000 people. In one single day, this force brought down 23,000 men. I'd like you to know that God has made provision for you to resist. And the grace to resist, she shall be multiplied upon your life in the name of Jesus. Purity is a warfare that you need to engage if you must live long. In this battle, don't trust yourself that you will do it. Trust the hand of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the moment. Those who look at the ultimate, they are not trapped by the immediate. And when you are deceived by the immediate, you have lost sight of the ultimate. There is an ultimate old age calling for you. But the way you are living today cannot guarantee it until you follow the right path. Remember, Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 30 that the prince of this world cometh, but he has no power in me. He has nothing in me. It is sure that the prince of this world is coming. But when he comes, will he get hold of you? Or will you be able to say he has nothing in me? That question is for you to search yourself and understand. This spirit can go as far as telling a man who is married or a woman who is married that everything you have now is not all you were looking for. Why not shop around for more? And the intention is very simple. To cage you and to destroy you. There are two types of sexual transmitted STDs. The first one is sexually transmitted diseases. And the second one is sexually transmitted demons. If you escape the disease, you can't escape the demons. And the truth of the matter, the demons will now afflict you again with the disease. So it's a circle that once you step into it, there's no running away. So the best way they always say is prevention is better than cure. Don't allow tomorrow to be bleak because of what you are doing today. And I see God giving you the grace for it in the mighty name of Jesus. There is a way you need to live and you don't need to worry about your health. Most times, pastors are bombarded. Pray. This is the challenge. But when you want to get to the root of the matter, you know that this where things proclaimed by self lifestyle. This morning, help has come for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Purity comes with responsibility. And that is the responsibility of keeping yourself. The responsibility of knowing that your body is not your own. Anyone that destroys the temple of God shall God destroy. Remember, when we break the hedge, serpent will certainly bite. But none of us shall fall victim to it in the name of Jesus. Number two, which causes sickness and diseases is the spirit of heaviness. This spirit injects negative feeling about ourselves. And blinds our eyes to the promises of God. And that is why Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3. Bible said that to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Why? So that they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. And Proverbs 17.22 said that a merry heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit dries the bone. We need to understand this. That as far as we are in this world, tribulation has not been stopped completely. Jesus said, in this world you have tribulations. Sometimes, when these things come to us, it easily makes us to know that God has forgotten us. Some people, by the time they lose a job, it's like the whole world has crashed upon them. They makes it, this spirit makes you believe that there is no more hope. Since this business has not delivered, what else can you do that will work? It signs you off to a loneliness that eventually leads you to, to depression. I'd like you to take note. Most of the sicknesses that has killed most and again in recent times has been the spirit of heaviness that is 
causing depression in the lives of many. But I'd like you to know, it has been conquered on the cross. And it shall not have hold over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We have had so many issues of suicide only because of a failed relationship. The man who knows that God is greater cannot be trapped by any disappointment. In fact, every disappointment is a door to a new appointment. And every breakdown is always a pointer to a new level of breakthrough. So this is why you need to reconfigure your mindset. That things has not worked now does not mean to not work. Don't always allow your circumstances to bring the conclusion of your status. The fact that the prince is on the mall does not make him not a prince. He might be playing presently on the mod. He might be playing presently on the mod. But his status is certain. And God has made you to be king and a priest to reign on the earth. That it's not showing now does not mean the verdict has not been concluded. You need to reconfigure your mind. And don't give place to the devil. In James chapter 4 verse 7. He said submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. These spirits can bring even a strong Christian down if not resisted. The spirit of heaviness and the spirit of perversion. But the good news is that the power to dominate them has been given to you finally in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, how can the anointing oil empower us for dominion over sickness and disease? We know today is our special anointing service. And one of the mysteries that God has provided to live above sickness and disease is the force of the anointing oil. The first one is that the mystery of the anointing oil was unveiled back in the Old Testament. And is ordained for effectiveness in all generations for God's people. Even though it came in the Old Testament, God ordained it to be effective for all generations. Exodus chapter 30, 25. He said, and that, that was when God gave Moses the specifications. Thou shalt make in it an oil for holy ointment. An ointment compound after the art of apothecary. It shall be an holy anointing oil. Verse 26. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation. And the ark of the testimony. And the table and all his vessels and the candlestick and his vessels and the altar of incense and the altar of the burnt offerings. All of this shall you do. And in verse 30, he said, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priestly office. And verse 31, he said, and thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. Remember, we are the spiritual Israelites. He said, it shall be an holy anointing oil for how long? Throughout your generation. So even though God instituted it back in the days. It is as effective in every of our day. Galatians 3.29. He said if you are Christ. And then you are Abraham's seed. And you are his according to the promise. So God brought it for our effectiveness. He brought it for the people of God. To be able to maximize it in all their generation. Its power never faded in the Old Testament. In fact, God has confirmed it over and again that it can still be effective. What else? The anointing oil is the spiritual medium by which the Holy Spirit manifests himself in our lives. Just as we saw in the life of David, God was able to silence the assault of the Philistines against Israel. First Samuel chapter 16, in verse 13, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brethren. What happened? And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. The moment that touch of oil comes upon you, it is not just an oil, the spirit now has a channel to take over. The same way incense are blown into an atmosphere and spirits are attracted for an operation. That is the same way the touch of oil invites the power of the Holy Spirit over everything contrary to the will of God in your life. So God is out to silence the arrows of the wicked against the enemies of our souls through this mystery in this service. And it shall be so for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 49 in verse 24. He said, shall the pre be taken from the mighty, or shall the lawful captive be delivered? 25, but thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, 
and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. Why? For I will contend with him that contend with thee, and I will save your children. He said, I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh, because of this, we know that I am the Lord, the Redeemer, and the Holy One of Jacob. So, with this oil, God is said to bring us out of every affliction of age-long sickness, disease. The things that have defied medical attention. The things that have no trace. It has no form. And it cannot actually have a cure. But by this mystery in the house this morning, victory shall be executed for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We had a testimony this morning that all of a sudden, the things you never imagined begin to happen. And by the slight of that oil, that affliction ceased. Someone else is next in line for that testimony in the name of Jesus. Now the question we are asking ourselves is what is in the oil that heals? Is it not just an oil that was manufactured? What will be in need that will be able to heal? Number one, the first thing which is in the oil is the healing power of God. Mark chapter 6 and verse 7. He called unto him the twelve. And send them forth two by two. And give them power over unclean spirit. In verse 12 of the same scripture. They went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils. Look at it. And anointed with oil many that were sick. And what happened? And healed them all. They prayed. But that was not the conclusion. They anointed the people who were sick. And the manifest power of God was released. That is why James chapter 5, in verse 14 to 15, he said, is any sick among you? This is what he will do. Let him call for the elders of the church. And once they have prayed over him, anointing him with the oil, in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And I believe that there is a power that has been made available. Not that God cannot heal. He has made these ordinances available. That imagine that if that woman of, if that daughter of Zion never had oil in the house, she couldn't get across to any elder of the church. She couldn't get across to the pastor. But the power to defeat that sickness was already present with her. And by the instruction she followed, the sickness disappeared from her. I'd like you to know that what is able to set you free is already in your hand. Most of the time we are waiting for one declaration to be made of us. Or to, for one hand to be laid of us. But God has given us power to subdue sickness and disease. That healing power you are looking for is already in your hand. And it will work for you today in the name of Jesus. What else? The anointing destroys yokes. The anointing is the yoke breaker. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day. Which is today. That his body shall be taken off from his shoulder. And his yoke from off his neck. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So there is one thing about yoke. A yoke is something placed upon you to control the direction of your destiny. It is uncomfortable. It is a burden. But by the anointing this morning, God shall be breaking it in the name of Jesus. Luke 4, 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set a liberty them that are bruised. Devil is a taskmaster. And the truth is that the God who is a God of liberty is here in the house. He shall be setting everyone free from the yoke of the oppressors in the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, what is there? There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. That liberty shall be manifested for you today in the name of Jesus. Next, the anointing is the power that sets captive free. It heals, it breaks yoke, and now it sets every captive free. We saw in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13 as we read earlier, that David was anointed. The spirit came upon him from the day forward. Next thing we heard is that David went to destroy the destiny of Goliath who was at his way an oppressor of the people of God. So when the anointing comes, it sets you free from the captive. They would have remained a slave 
to the Philistine. But because of the anointing that came upon him, God now took him as a channel of liberation. And you need to know that the anointing exempts believers from every evil of the day. We heard in the testimony that what happened to others because he, she knew her stand as a believer and as a winner, she was supernaturally exempted. So there is something in the oil that exempts you. Please ask yourself this question. The same road that you passed is the same road that somebody will pass almost the next second and there was an accident. I'd like you to know that there is a force of exemption on earth and it's available for the redeemed of God. That exemption is only available for those who bear the mark. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 17. He said, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. Why? Because I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus. When you are bearing the mark, it makes you untouchable. It makes you impenetrable by evil. It makes other things that destroy others that when they see you, they bow for you. It makes the disadvantages of others to become your own advantage. And that will be your reality after the service in the name of Jesus. It exempts believers from the evil of the day. Harassment is not something pleasant. But it can be avoided. How? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Remember, Psalm 105, 13 to 15. They went from one nation to the other, from one kingdom to another people, and the master who is their God, he suffered no one to do them wrong. He even reproved kings for their sake. Why? Saying, touch not the one I have anointed, the one I have separated, the one I have consecrated, and do them no harm. This shall be your body today in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is a seal that makes us not to be touched by the enemy. It is not everyone that can be afflicted by diseases if they have this understanding. In the time of COVID, we had a testimony from one of our stations. A pastor was posted to a COVID ward. And in all of the days, he was ministering and attending to the patients who were COVID positive. In most cases, most of the things he was given to administer health failed. He resorted to the communion. He resorted to the anointing. And in all of those operations, there was not once that he had a slight, a slight symptoms. Not even a headache to indicate that this thing has entered him. Why? Understanding. Because the people that know their God, they shall be strong, impenetrable by sickness, untouchable by disease. Why? An awareness of exemption will always take you away from destruction. So you need to come and work and make the most of this mystery that has been provided. The oil is for your exemption and truly it shall exempt you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Next, it is the restoration power of God. Anything the devil has taken can be restored by the power of the anointing. Especially health. Jeremiah 30 verse 17. I will restore them health. I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of your wounds, saith the Lord, because they have already called you an outcast, saying that nothing will come out of this one, saying that this is Zion whom no man seeketh after. But God is promising a restoration for us, and that restoration shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. Joel 2.25, I will restore health. I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten. The years the cankerworm has eaten. The caterpillar, the palmerworm, and my great army which I sent among you. At the end, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And he said, my people shall never be ashamed. Anything that makes you bow your head when you see your mate, God is about to take it away finally. <laughs> Every affliction that makes you to hide your identity before men. God is set to uproot it from your body in the name of Jesus. What else? It is the resurrection power of God that brings back to life everything dying or dead in our body. The resurrection power. Romans 8 and verse 11. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from dead dwells in you, the same spirit, not the inferior one, not the half, the same spirit that raised Christ from dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the spirit that dwelleth in you. So there is a force of restoration. There is a force of restoration. Kidney that is not working can be replaced. Every lungs that has packed up can be rejuvenated. Every organ of the body that has not been working effectively by this anointing today, God shall be restoring it in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 10 verse 7 As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, 
cleanse the lepers and raise the dead and cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So God has made it available for us. Resurrection, restoration, resurrection, power of God. And next, the oil of gladness which brings health and vitality is in the oil. The anointing is the oil of gladness. Remember, we said there is a spirit of heaviness that wants to afflict a man and isolate him until he has lost everything. But there is an oil of gladness that is available in the house. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain him in his infirmity. But a wounded spirit who can bear. And Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. He said for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So there is an oil of gladness. That when it comes upon us today. The same thing that has been depressing us. Is the same thing that will channel us to thanksgiving to God. Because God will turn it to our testimony. So there is an oil of gladness that is available. Therefore, that issue of depression is over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Next, it is the vengeance power of God that brings an end to the wickedness of the wicked in our lives. Isaiah 63 verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good. Healing all that we oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And I'm glad you have come to the mountain of liberation. God who liberates men in this mountain shall bring every, every torment in your life into vengeance and judgment in the name of Jesus. So you need to understand this. All of these are available on the anointing mystery. And also it is the mystery of the fan and the fire that destroys the planting of the devil. Whatsoever the devil has planted, there is one mystery that can go in there and uproot it. Many years ago in this commission, a testimony was raised by a woman who went for a surgery. And at the end of that surgery, it was only shared when she recovered. And she, it was mistakenly that the cotton wool and the piece of the wire that was used to sew her was forgotten in her system. And she was bearing that affliction with all manner of pain. Stepped into a service like this in Canaan land. And by the shot of oil, that affliction, all of a sudden she felt a rumbling. Went to the toilet and excreted them. Life cutting wound and the piece of the wire that was left to sew her. So there are certain things that happen internally that we are not aware of. But the good news is that we have the fire that will consume everything that has not been planted by God. Matthew chapter 15 verse 13. Jesus answered unto them. He said, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted, shall be rooted up. Everything that my heavenly father has not planted, call it HIV, call it migraine, call it cancer, anything, it shall be rooted out. And that vengeance shall be fated today in the name of Jesus. That is the verdict of God concerning the mystery we are facing today. And the good news is that today is our breaking generational causes. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. First of all, what is a curse? A curse is a pronouncement that has the ability to cause misfortune. A curse is a pronouncement that brings affliction to people. The intention of it is to provoke a supernatural harm upon the person it bears. And you need to know that causes can either be proclaimed or incurred. Cause can be proclaimed or it can be incurred by a particular lifestyle. This is why the word is ruled by what we call cause and effect. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, the same he shall reap. There is a cause which is proclaimed and there is a cause which is attracted. For instance, in Zechariah chapter 5 verse 4, Bible said that the cause of the Lord is upon the house of the thief. And Psalm 7 in verse 11, he said that God is angry with the wicked every day. These are things that are tantamount to attracting a cause in the life of a believer. But the same way causes are proclaimed, there is something called the blessing. When the blessing comes, it cancels the effect of causes. Blessings 
a pronouncement that trigger fortune and that brings desired occurrences for us. And God has made it so that the only replacement for a cause is the blessing. That is what we saw in Deuteronomy 33 verse 6. The cause that was placed upon Reuben by his father in Genesis 49. That is why Moses said, let Reuben live and not die. Let, let not his men be few. Why? Blessing replaced causes. But one thing you need to know that causes are often generational in nature. It can stay up to the lifespan of three to four generations. That is, it can travel as far as three to four hundred years in a particular location where it is sent. Genesis chapter 15. God was speaking to Abraham concerning his offsprings. And he said to Abraham, Genesis 15, 13, Know of a shorty that your seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs. They shall serve them and they shall afflict them for what? 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. After that, they shall come out with great sultans. And thou shalt go in your fathers in peace and be buried at a good old age. Verse 16. But in the fourth generation, they shall come kid hither again. For the iniquity of Amorite is full. And what caused that? Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. He said, thou shalt not bow yourself to any other god. So, the cause which was placed because of idolatry took them to slavery and they served for as far as 400 years. You and I are from Africa. You know that many things that the children suffer are because of the activities of their parents. This is why a word of caution is coming to us this morning. You are a parent, be careful of your lifestyle. Because what we are doing today is only an investment in any way on the generation that is yet to come. Many of our forefathers went to a deity and said, as long as you do this for me, me and my offspring will serve you. When they now refused to serve, it came as an affliction. And how does it manifest? You see that a particular lineage, it is difficult for one person to raise their head. The moment they want to emerge, something brings them down. The moment they want to be announced, something submerges them. Why? A cause has been pronounced that restricts the advancement. And you also see that in most places, marriage is a challenge. Even if they manage to get into a place, the marriage will eventually break. Why? There is a cause that is already there. But the good news is Galatians 3.13, that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. And it was made a cause for us, being hung on the tree. Why? Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come unto us that believe through faith. So, I'd like you to know that this thing is existent, but much more important is our victory over them. That is why the best way to predict a future is to check what has happened in the past. There is always a pattern of existence. The best way to predict the next 100 years is to check what has happened the 100 years previous. What is the repeated occurrences in this family? When you now identify the roots, it is easier for you to deal with them. The good news is that those causes shall be destroyed this morning in the name of Jesus. Everything Jesus died for include destruction of causes. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Which was contrary to our breakthrough. Contrary to our advancement. Contrary to our announcement. Contrary to our promotion. And he took it out of the way. Why? He nailed it to the cross. So the moment that we are nailing Christ on the cross. They were nailing every cause of disappointment. They were nailing every cause of rising and falling. They were nailing every cause of backwardness in our life. If you believe that is you shout a big amen. Yeah. So causes are the direct works of Satan and his agent. Which we are empowered to overcome. By faith of the finished work of Christ. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 28, when they came to him, they said, we sowed good seed in this land. How come we are saying something contrary? He said, an enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. And First John chapter 5, verse 4, he said that anyone that is born of God overcomes the world, including the works of the enemy. And he said, this is the victory, even our faith. So faith enables us to take hold of the finished works and nail every oppression of that causes. But the good news is that kingdom stewardship is one way to activate the blessing. Remember, we said that the only thing that can override the cause is a blessing. To attract the blessing, you need to be rooted in stewardship. 
Those who understand the language of service can never be trapped by what trapped their parents. Those who know the way to serve can never be limited by the limiting forces of others. There is a man that can change the destiny of a whole lineage. And if that man understands the force of stewardship, he will rise earlier than everyone imagined. Because this language has been made available for us in the winner's family, you are rising above everything that has limited others in the name of Jesus. Job 36, 11, if they obey and they serve, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. In all of these things, we didn't see cause there. So as long as you understand the force of obedience and you understand the format of service, your days are secured. Your years are secured. And that of your children also. That is why Matthew says that he said that when you seek the kingdom first and its righteousness, other things shall be added to us. And of course, every one of us should expect today that every cause Every satanic or generational diabolical forces shall be broken in this service in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. By a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet they were preserved. The prophet over our lives has spoken that today causes, spells and enchantments shall be broken. And there shall be nothing less for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So all you need to do open up your heart because God is said to do a quick work for you. That causes that has limited generations up before you. It shall be broken in this service in the name of Jesus. Don't forget that what you do determines how you live. Bible said a seed shall serve him and it shall be counted for him for a generation. So if you understand these things that has been laid out, you will live your life as if the devil does not exist. Finally, it's your turn. In the name of Jesus Christ. Will you rise up with me this morning? Lift up your voice and appreciate the Lord. Give him thanks. Give him glory for that is a way out. Thank you for causes shall not have its hold ever over anymore in your life. Spells and enchantment shall not have its will anymore in your life. Is that your desire this morning? Now begin to exercise your lordship over every pronouncement that was made to our paternal lineage, our maternal lineage, wherever it is that is being a holder in my life, in my fortune, in that of my children. By the authority of the cross, you are subdued this morning. For whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted, it shall be rooted out. Pray consciously. Engage with God. Begin to uproot everything Jesus has not planted. Disappointment is not part of your heritage. Failure is not part of it. Backwardness is not part of it. Stagnation is not part of it. Retrogression is not part of it. Terminal disease is not allowed there. Now begin to open fire upon every planting of the devil in my family, upon my children, upon our lineage, the cause of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ, every planting of the enemy is rooted out this morning. Pray consciously. Pray with intensity. Lord, on this service, I take hold of my liberty. 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 Pray. Father, by your hand, liberate us as a family. Liberate us as a lineage from everything that limits us. Whatever you have not planted, let it be rooted out. Is that your desire this morning? Pray in faith. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the understanding. Provided you are rooting them out. For he has given you power to trample over them. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3, he said, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So salvation is the way to escape everything that has been a limit. Therefore, you are here in this service. You want to return to God in sincerity and in truth. And have every hold of causes broken over your life. And have your destiny the way God has ordained it. I'd like you to come forward. Wherever you are in this sanctuary, come forward. In any of the overflows, approach the altar area. Lift wherever you are i'd like you to come forward don't be shy don't look around god wants to set you free you are here moving in the mist i worship you 
Congratulate you because today marks a change of story for you. Amen. Therefore, I'd like you to place your hand on your chest and say this simple prayer of faith. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I recognize that I'm a sinner and you died to set me free. Therefore, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Wash me of all my sins. I confess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Holy Spirit, be my helper from this time and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for your son you have drawn into the kingdom. The grace that has brought him, let him keep him to the end in the name of Jesus. He shall be forward ever in his walk with you and backward never. We declare that every form of affliction in his life before now be supernaturally broken. Thank you for writing his name in his Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. Open your eyes. Follow our pastors, they have one or two informations. Hallelujah. Today, you are going back with a definite change of story in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus.